Well, a very good evening to you viewers. Welcome to United States of Africa. And my name is Kamine, all the way from Kenya. And in studios, I'm joined in by Mr. Eze from Nigeria. Mr. Eze is the author of the one book uh, called the, the Wisdom and the Power of Africa Unity and the 222 Questions about Africa, uh, the power and African progress. Welcome, Mr. Eze. Oh, welcome, Benedict. Good to see you. Um, greetings to all Africans all over the world. This is Eze Chiman Moza. Good to see you. Please join us in this show. Thank you, and feel free to uh, feel free to give us the feedback and questions. Keep them coming today. And on our today's topic, we're gonna talk about uh, seven reasons why African must unite. Mr. Eze, welcome. Can you please tell us? Uh, first of all, can you explain to us what is unity? As you talked about seven reasons as to why African must unite. Oh, thanks a lot, Benedict. Um, thanks for the introduction. Greetings to Daniel Wabono, the leader of the GPAN. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, first of all, let's talk about African unity. First of all, who is an African? Um, we have various definitions of who an African is. We have those who are Africans by ethnicity. For example, if you're an Oromo, if you are from the Igbo ethnic group, if you're from the Nupe ethnic group, if you're from the Baba ethnic group, you're an African. Then we also have those who are African by race. If you're a black man all over the world, you are an African. Like Peter Tosh once said, I don't care who you are, whatever, well, which, which nature you are from. Once you are black, you are African. So we also have those who are African by genetics. Genetically, it has been proven that all people on earth came out from Africa. So we all are Africans, actually. But we are referring to, to those who are Africans by ethnicity. Those are people who we know as Africans. All of us, we're all Africans. And those who are also Africans by race, all blacks all over the world. So then you're talking about unity. What is unity? Unity means coming together. Unity means coming together to achieve an aim. It means oneness. It means cooperation. So African unity means the cooperation of all Africans to achieve African progress. When all Africans co co cooperate to achieve African progress, it is called African unity. Now, there are dimensions of African unity. A lot of persons, when they, you ask them about African unity, they believe African unity is just an emotional holding of hands, holding conferences, just talking about Africa and that's all. To some persons, African unity is all about global unity of Africans, like the Black Lives Matter movement and so on. To some, African unity is about continental unity, the United States of Africa or the United Continent of Africa. Now, let's talk about African unity. There are four main dimensions of African unity and two other dimensions of African unity. First of all, we have global unity of Africans. We have two, continental unity of Africa. We have three, ethnic unity of Africans. And we have four, the intercontinental unity of Africa. Then we also have two other dimensions, which are called special dimensions. And they are also the two determinants of African unity. We have unity between African leaders, and we have unity between African leaders and people. So these are the dimensions we have to understand before we talk about African unity. Now, let's go straight to the point. Why should Africa unite? Should we just unite for the sake of unity? No, we do not unite for the sake of unity. We unite for the fruits of unity. And one of those fruits include, one, the fruit of peace. What is peace? Peace is freedom from violence, freedom from worry, freedom from harm, and freedom from terror. Peace is when there is absolute tranquility. That is what we mean by peace. Peace is not just the absence of violence. Dr. Martin Luther King once made a statement saying, peace is not the absence of tension. Peace is the presence of justice. That is because Johan Gartung once defined that peace has two different types. He said that we have negative peace and we have positive peace, and that's correct. Negative peace is peace achieved by violence. Peace that is just all about we, no more violence, we don't have nobody's fighting, and so on. That's the kind of peace that is called negative peace. 
Then we have the other type of peace, known as positive peace, which I also call lasting peace. Lasting peace or positive peace is peace achieved through peaceful means. Peace through peaceful means. And peace where there is justice, where everybody is included in the system, where everybody is at home, where everybody feels relaxed, where everybody is free from harm, free from fear, free from worries. And that is the kind of peace that we want in Africa. Peace where there is justice in Africa. Currently, there are a lot of conflicts in Africa. And conflicts, as we know, has three stages. We have three stages of conflicts. We have first, the surface conflict, the surface stage. Then we have the latent stage, two. And three, we have the open conflict stage. Surface conflict stage is when we just um, start building up some grudges because the system is not favoring you. You don't like how the system is. There's no justice. Then it goes to the latent stage. Latent stage is when it has built up to a point. People are now waiting to explode. Then before you know it, it explodes and becomes open conflict. Currently in Africa, we have many open conflicts going on in Africa. We have conflicts in Nigeria. We have conflicts in DRC. We have conflicts in Libya. We have in Cameroon. We have in Somalia. These conflicts all need our attention. We all need to solve these problems, to solve all these problems of conflict in Africa. Also, we have about 100 border issues, conflicts in Africa, according to Odontan Wenger, author of international law and border disputes in Africa. These issues need our urgent attention to solve. Also, according to the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, there are about 39.1 million Africans who are currently internally displaced people. What are we going to do? Are we going to allow all these conflicts to continue? Now, we also have some latent conflicts in Africa. Look at the issue between um, Ethiopia and Egypt about the building of the dam. If we do not resolve this issue, we're going to have a very serious conflict in Africa. So these are conflicts that we need to unite and solve. That is why Africa must unite. We must unite to bring peace to Africa. We need this peace. We need to stop these wars in Africa. We have to end the violence. We have to silence the guns, as the African Union always talks about. We cannot do that alone. No nation on their own will be able to solve all these conflicts or stop them. We need to come together and solve these problems. We need to intervene. The issue in Cameroon needs the urgent attention of the African Union and African people. African leaders should team together and stop these wars and bring peace to Cameroon. The same thing in Libya. Even in Nigeria, the Boko Haram issue, the issue of Hezmen, and different conflicts in Nigeria, the agitations for secession, the Biafran groups, and so on, we need urgent attention in Nigeria. If not, we also have open conflicts in Nigeria. So these are issues that we need to, to, to tackle as Africans. This is why Africa must unite. Two, Africa must unite for the sake of decolonization. We need to decolonize Africa. To decolonize is to undo colonialism. Decolonization is the undoing of colonialism. To remove every vestige of colonialism and new colonialism and imperialism. That is what we need to unite against. Currently in Africa, what we have is independence. What is independence? A lot of persons say that independence is political freedom. That what we need now is economic freedom. Permit me to disagree with them. Independence is not political freedom. Independence is just physical freedom. Physical freedom in that we used to have white men as our governor generals and so on. Now we have Africans as our presidents, governors, senators. We used to have European flag, for example, the Union Jack in Nigeria. Now we have green, white, green as the flag of Nigeria. All these things are physical. They're not political. These are physical uh, emblems of, uh, of independence. They don't mean freedom. They don't have anything to do with political freedom. Freedom is what Africa needs. And what is freedom? Freedom is spiritual, political, mental, social, and total freedom. That is what, that is what freedom is. 
when there is total liberty all around, total liberty, that is what we need in Africa. And that is why we must decolonize Africa. And how do we achieve the decolonization of Africa? We achieve it through unity. Decolonization, which is freedom for Africa, means that we break away from this mentality that Africans should be the consumers and not the producers. We have cocoa in Ghana, the Ivory Coast, but we have the companies that are mostly owned by Switzerland, France, and so on, that refine this cocoa, uh, cocoa to chocolate. We have gold, but who's going to control the gold? Foreigners. The diamonds we have in Africa, controlled by the, the beers, the, the British company. Why should it be so? This is a colonial mentality. So we cannot still have this kind of mentality and believe that we are free. That, that is a joke. Two, so look at the uh, um, system put to us by the Europeans. Look at the countries that they created for us. I'm a Nigerian, I'm a Ghanaian, and so on. These countries were created for us by the Europeans. Decolonization and freedom of Africa means that we come together as Africans and decide the type of countries or states that we need in Africa for all Africans and not for Europeans or to Europeans. If we do not do so, we are still under the colonialism. Decolonization, freedom for Africa means freedom from SIFA. 15 African nations still use SIFA, a colonial currency given to them by France. They still have to keep their reserve treasury with France. Such is not freedom. Such is still fake freedom and still in the fake independence, if you ask me. Look at how France keeps assassinating African leaders. Freedom for Africa means the end of the assassination of African leaders. According to the uh, AfricanGlobe.net, about 22 African presidents have been assassinated by France so far. Starting with Olympio Silvio, uh, former president of Togo, who wanted to print his own currency, and the French, they killed him before he could print, print his own currency. Over 67 coups have occurred in Africa. These are leaders who, because they wanted to save Africa, they wanted to liberate Africa, they wanted to do something good for Africa, they were killed to stop the liberation and the freedom of Africa. Freedom for Africa means when African leaders stop dying because they want to do something for Africa. And we can only solve this problem by uniting. If we don't unite, we cannot solve all this problem because which African country can pull us from FIFA? Which African country can stop paying colonial tax? Haiti also paid the same colonial tax. They paid it in 1825. France mandated the, uh, uh, Haiti to start paying colonial tax to France. They paid it for 122 years. The amount that they paid is equivalent to about $21 billion in today's currency. Is that freedom? Is that the kind of freedom we are, we are talking about? That's not the kind of thing we need in Africa. No nation can become great under new colonialism. Most African states have different deals that they signed with the colonial masters before they got their independence. And you will never know about all those deals until you become the African uh, president in Africa. If you refuse to renew those deals, just be on your way out of office. And you are also going to be broke for crimes, even the crimes you didn't commit. I want to make a statement on Facebook. I said, the Europeans or the colonial, colonial masters, they do not remove African leaders when they are oppressing you. They remove African leaders when those leaders start disobeying them. So all these leaders you see in Africa, most of them are serving the interests of the colonial masters. And that is why we must unite to be free. Because no African state can be free alone. Any African state that tries to be free alone, without the concept, without the uh, um, umbrella of African unity, that African nation will regret its action. Look at Libya. Libya was the richest country in Africa. After marriage, they gave you some money, free electricity, and so on. How is Libya today? Since 2011, Libya has been experiencing civil war. Ghana, under the document, Kuma, insisted on freedom. What happened to Ghana? They overthrew him in 1966. He died in exile in 1976. Sankara, in 1987, was assassinated. After leaving his country for four years, no aid, no foreign loans, nothing else. Just because he wanted to build the nation, they removed him. 
That is the kind of problem we are we are having in Africa. How do we solve this problem? Through unity. When Africa unites, we can decide to decolonize Africa completely. Look at the kind of education we have in Africa. If education to speak grammar, I can speak good English, I can speak the Queen's English. Who, who, what are you doing in the Queen's English? Is that what you need? We need freedom, we need progress. That's what we need in Africa. Not speaking good English or speaking good French. Those things are useless. That's the kind of education that they give to us. Instead of industrialization, we have grammatization. That's, that's the kind of thing we need. We need industrialization in Africa, and we need to reform our educational system to be decolonized so that we can have people who can build Africa, not people who can speak good grammar. These are things we need to address in Africa. When we come together, we pinpoint this problem and solve them. And most of these problems cannot be solved by any African nation alone, because going alone is disaster, is suicide. Any African nation that tries to go alone to the police is committing suicide and will pay the price. That is why Africa must unite. When we unite, we can now be free to carry out all these liberation processes that we need to do. Because if you do it without African unity, these people are already around. They will come after you and fight you. But when we unite, an African proverb says, when the spiders unite, they can tie the lion. So when we unite, that's where we can actually tie down this lion of nuclearism, which has kept Africa in bondage for too long. That is why we must unite. So we need this freedom, we need this decolonization in Africa. So that is why we must unite. No nation can be free alone. That is the fact. So we need that power. We need that strength, which is number three. We need to be strong. That's number three reason why Africa must unite. We need that strength. Strength is the ability to do something bigger than what you used to do, than what others can do. So when you unite, you become stronger. There's a quote that says, even the weak become strong when they unite. Even the weak become strong when they unite. Many people have used broomsticks to explain this concept that when a single broomstick is they can break it alone. But when you pack them together, a bundle, you can easily break it. That is the power of unity. We need to unite to be strong. A strong currency, a strong army, strong leadership, strong market. These are things we stand to gain if we unite, or rather, let me say, when we unite. Africa has a population of about 1.35 billion people. This is the second largest market in the world. After China of about 1.45 billion, India and Africa share almost exactly the same population. So we're talking about having the largest in the world. If Africa unites, having the second largest market in the world, we'll be able to tell the world how much we want to buy this product and how much we want to sell our own product. Without unity, they'll keep telling us how much they can buy our product and how much they'll sell to us. Strong army. When we unite and have the United States of Africa. Africa Command or United Nations of Africa Command. Which nation in the world is going to fight Africa? We have among the strongest army in the world because when we put our strength together, when we put all the 55 states in Africa, come together and form a single army, that army will become a very strong army. And with that, who can invade Africa? Who will talk about colonizing Africa again? Dr. Kwame Kuma once said that when we unite, no nation can be able to invade Africa through small wars, which they have been doing. You just invade this small nation with just like a, a thousand soldiers and take over. But when we unite, no nation can try that. To invade the United Continent of Africa, you just like want to cause the world war. But when we remain, remain violent, you can colonize us anything we want. A strong currency. Look at the currency that uh, Mamadela talked about, the Afro. A currency backed by gold for all Africans. That is a very good concept. But the problem is, he was killed even before he could do it. That is it. Those who hate Africa know the power of African unity. And those who love Africa don't know the power of African unity. We believe that we should not unite, that there's no need for unity, that we can do it alone. Have we done anything? What have we achieved? After more than six years of independence, what have we achieved? We are seeing the forest people in the world. They see killer leaders. They see telling what to do. What are we waiting for to unite? If we look at the European Union, Europeans are strong, yet they united. We that are weak, we are waiting for someone to tell us to unite. This is, I don't know, let me say crazy, for me to use that kind of word. It is very, very crazy if you ask me, how can the strong know the power of unity and the weak 
refuse to be nice. If to me, I, I don't understand this. If you understand, please explain to me because I just do not understand this. I don't understand. We need a strong army to free Africa. Look at uh, the internal issues like Boko Haram, the Al Shabaab, and so on. Look at the war going on in Libya. With a united army, we can take charge and flush out all those uh, uh, um, elements. So we unite for strength. Look at in the United Nations. The United Nations was formed in the year 1945. In the United Nations, you have the General Assembly and you have the United Nations Security Council. The General Assembly is where the heads of states come to, to cast news. Oh, my country is doing fine. My country is doing this. My country is good. How are you? The real power in the United Nations is not in the General Assembly. It is in the United Nations Security Council. And in the United Nations Security Council, you have five permanent members. You have France, UK, China, you have Italy, and you have the UK. These are the five nations that decide what happens in the world. Whatever they say becomes the law. They have the veto power. They have the power to say this is not going to happen, and it happens. Not a single African nation is part of the United Nations Security Council. And we're talking about freedom or we are independent. Which independence? Where is, where is the independence? We are weak because we are we are we are divided. Divided, we are weak, united, we are strong. When Africa unites as one nation, as one continent, the United Continent or the United States of Africa, we can press on the United Nations Security Council that Africa should be a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council. And guess what? Once we become a member of the United Nations Security Council, permanent member, that's uh, our membership will be used to serve the whole of Africa. You can't invade Africa again. We passed a resolution through the United Nations Security Council. You can't do anything in Africa again. How do you think we had this opportunity? Gerard would have fallen because it was through the United Nations Security Council that Gerard fell. They passed a no flying zone through the United Nations Security Council on 17th of May 2011. They also passed a, 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 a law, a resolution that froze his account. And this allowed him from traveling outside Libya in the 5th of February 2011. They also recognized the National Constitution Council of Libya as the um, legitimate government of Libya. So, what are things that have been happening to us because we do not want to unite? So, when we unite, all these things will stop. We have a permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. So, these are things that we need in Africa. These are things that we stand against when we unite. Is that it's not the theory, it's not just a theory, it's, it's practical, it's something that you can begin to see right now. Number four, look at, okay. look at um, organizations in Africa, the African Union. Who funds the African Union? You say African people. Do you know that uh, the, the, the funding of the African Union does not come fully from African people? The funding of African Union comes one third from Africa and two third from outside. Which leads me to the fourth point. Africa must unite to take charge. Africa must unite to cover our own, to be in charge of our own affairs. One third of African Union budget comes from African nations. Two third comes from America, Canada, European Union, and so on. The African Union headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, was built by the Chinese. The ECOWAS headquarters in Abuja is currently built, built by the Chinese. The African Development Bank, you believe it's owned by the Africans, right? You know who, who owns the African Devo uh, Development Bank now. The top, out of the top 10 voters in the African Development Bank, five are non-African nations. We're talking about Japan, US, Germany, France, and we're talking about Germany. Germany, UK, France. Okay, no, Germany, France, um, US, Japan. These nations control more votes, even than many African states in the African Development Bank. Now, you talk about the Black Lives Matter movement. Did you know that the Black Lives Matter movement is being funded by a white man known as George Soros? That is the problem we're having. Now, you talk about issues going on in, in Africa. Look at Libya. 
The African Union, what the African Union did in Libya? Almost nothing. I, I don't see any impact. Turkey, US, France, they're the ones deciding what is going on in Libya. Look at the Cameroon issue. France is the one deciding what is going on in Cameroon now. Where is the African Union? Where are the African leaders? Where, where are we? And all these things are happening. Because what we have is a very weak degree of unity because there are about five degrees of African unity. We are just operating at the among the least degree of African unity. We changed the name of OAU to AU in 2012. Yet we didn't even change much in the degree of unity. How can we have all these issues in Africa and those who are addressing them are foreigners? This is why we must unite. We must unite to address these our issues by ourselves. When the Chinese built the African Union headquarters, what they do? They bombed the headquarters. They put um, eavesdropping devices and they were listening to what was going on in the African Union headquarters right from Beijing. Is that independence? That's the artist. You are just UFO. You want to add something? Well, uh, Mr. Eve, it, uh, well, it has been a very, very, very awesome and very educative uh, discussion. The reasons why we must uh, unite and uh, remember United States of uh, Africa, we're seeking to, uh, to reunite and um, to, uh, to advocate, we, are, we also advocate for the, the, our, the black, uh, the black, the black human rights, and uh, we also need to re. We also need to reunite. So thank you so much for joining us in the studio, and um, I think I get. Uh, you'll just have to summarize so that you can end our discussion because we are running out of time today. And um, in the comments, I can see Maradona. Hi from. Um, West Papua, thank you for joining us and thank you so much. We really appreciate you all the way from West Papua. Uh, back to you, uh, please summarize it to us in a few clues. And, um... oh, yes, I'll talk about, talk about four. There are still many three regions. I'll, I'll just summarize. We still need to unite to fight for our rights. We still need to unite um, to avoid being colonized again. And we still need to unite to be rich. Um, these three points are still very long. Uh, since we have to summarize, maybe some other time we still talk more about all these things. So uh, these are there are seven, these are many more reasons. There are still things I, I would have said, but we still have more time to still talk about all these things and so on. So African unity is, is non-negotiable, it's just something that we have to do. And it's something a program that we all should get involved because this is where our liberation. So we all should come together and unite Africa because whatever cannot be achieved in unity cannot be attempted in this unity. Some say that why did Mandela not expropriate the land from South Africans, from the white Africans? The issue is that he did not have enough power to do so. Because if we were united, the whole of Africa would have collected that the land from the white. But he cannot do it, he couldn't have done it alone. So we cannot do all the simple things alone. I will talk more about this thing, but now let's summarize it. So we must unite to be free because in African unity lies African freedom and all the good things that we have been wishing for Africa. So let's get involved in African unity. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Izzy, for joining us today. Uh, and thank you all those that tuned in today. We love you so much. And uh, that's the end of our discussion for today. See you next time. I've been your host, Kamenia from Kenya. Thank you.